Good evening. This is Crime Classics. I am Thomas Highland with another true story of crime. Listen. Ali Pasha on his way to visit his mother. A Sunday afternoon, and he always visited his mother on Sunday afternoon. It was a thing she could count on. A mother has always wanted a place of her own, where she could get away from it all, secluded. Ali gave it to her. The deepest dungeon in Turkey. Hello, Mother. Tonight, my report to you on Ali Pasha, a Turkish delight. Crime Classics, a series of true crime stories taken from the records and newspapers of every land, from every time. Your host each week, Mr. Thomas Highland, connoisseur of crime, student of violence, and teller of murders. Now, once again, Thomas Highland. There were harems in those days, and fezes, and veils, and scimitars, and slaughter. Albania's chief imports from her Turkish masters. For in 1750, the Ottoman Empire was still powerful and bled her vassals, left Albania bleak and starving, and a wild country scourged with marauding bandit tribes. It was terror and theft and pillage and flame, and a child's mute staring at death image. Ali, at the age of nine, a childlike reaction to the murder of his father, a silent comment upon the raid of the horsemen of the Kisuran tribe. My child, my child. A mother, a new widow whose name was Kahamko. My child, be there in the corner, your brother and your sister, huddled and silent and weak, having found sleep to shield them from pain. Weak and coward. So there is but you and I. Then listen. This night the Kisura came down from the hills and killed your father and burned all there was to burn, so that now we live in a cave. Your father was weak without the strength to fight them off. The wealth of a man is his only so long as he is strong enough to keep it, and this includes his life. So, therefore, you will be strong, Ali. And whatever you truly wish will be yours because of that strength. You will avenge this night, Ali. But above all, remember this night as a symbol. Those with power flourish. To them, anything is allowed. Power and no compassion for your enemies. That is the trick. Tonight, you have gained wisdom. Now, sleep. Mother's charge to her son, uh, which was the next week translated into action when the two of them left the cave and went down into town. The first house they came upon belonged to a shepherd and his wife who welcomed them inside. Bread and curd was brought, and when the repast was over, mother and son each displayed a pistol and... <laughs> became homeowners again. And fetched brother and sister, and the family was complete again. And so it went, and so did time. From homeowner to landowner, and then... I am honored, sir, that you have come to visit me. Said the widow to a palace owner who lived on the hill. I bid you enter. Mm, word of your beauty has come from the hills, and I wish to see it. And this is my son. And now that mine eyes have looked upon you... I despise myself for not coming sooner. This is my son, and his name is Ali. And in the hills, though closer to heaven we are, there is no such beauty as yours. His name is Ali, and one day he will be great. I fall at your feet and kiss your hem. One day he will be great. 
He has a brother and sister, but they are weaklings. Not Ali. Not my son, Ali. I love you. What will happen to my son? <laughs> Young man, come near. How would you like to live in a palace, young man? Uh, Kamko? Yes? What a pleasing smile your son wears. Yes. Let all of us live in a palace. The man who made the invitation was named Zurat, an amazingly spry fellow who was almost 70, a birthday he never celebrated. And that's how Ali came to be a prince. Not an important prince as princes go, but he had the run of a pretty good palace, uh, traveled around a lot to Turkey, to Greece, and Crete. A life agreed with him, and he grew into a strapping young man. The family prospered, and by this time, Ali had fallen into a habit it was never difficult for him to kill. Not for the mother like he had. In Kardiki, there is a man. He owns a province. He has a harem of 20 and a stable of 40 and slaves. His name is Good Pasha. And if he were slain, all his property could be taken by his slayer. And more than that, he is the last survivor of the tribe which slew your father. I have summoned you to remind you of it. Yes. Needless to say, Ali became the new owner of a new harem and new horses and slaves. And the tribe which had slain his father was now extinct. And a month later... I have summoned you to tell you the Pasha of Delvino is young and strong and swears that no man will face him. I thought you should know it. Needless to say, Ali put the title of Pasha of Delvino under his belt. And the next month... We have such a nice family. Yes, we do, Mother. Your brother is content with his sheep and his wife. And my sister is married to the Pasha of Argy Rockastrom. And you, wealthy... And with much power. Ali? Yes? Your sister is wealthier than you and with more power. I've thought of that. But... Her husband has provinces and much gold. I'm fond of him. He has a domain second only to the sultan. Nevertheless, he is a good man and thinks only of how to make my sister happy. Listen to me. Do not ask me to kill him. Once, when you were nine years old, you lived in a cave. And there was the heart in you of a young lion. And so it is today. You would be second to the sultan. Yes. Then kill him. And tell me what else, sister. He is a great man and a great husband. Oh, look about you. One of the many wonders he has made for me. This very lake was a village. And my husband once heard me cry out of the squalidness of it. So he made a lake of it. And slaves to paddle me about in it is now. And look below how clear the water. You can still see the houses. You glow when you speak of him. He is gentle, monsieur. And you love him dearly. Love him? Yes. I'm not sure. Oh? He shuns the harem for me, and my whim becomes... A, a lake, a castle, a jeweled saddle. Whatever my whim. Yet... Yet what? Oh, see, there he waits for us at the landing house. You've not answered me. Yet what? I do not know. Then ask yourself this. Would you weep if he were dead? Dead? If he were slain? Why are you here, Ali? To pay homage to my sister. To slay her husband. Tell me, do you love him? Do not kill him, Ali. If he were to die, the people of his province would take allegiance to me. 
And I would be second to the Sultan. Are you not tired of killing? No. But you killed so many. I was born to it. No, your mother... You should not curl your lip when you say the word. She is ambitious and evil and, and has taught you to kill. Do not speak of herself. She has deluded you, cheated you. No. Yes. Of her flesh and her blood, she has made a slave. She says, kill to you when you kill. You are not a prince, Ali. Would you weep for him? Ali. Yes. He is as strong as you and wields the sword. We shall see. Oh, Solomon! Oh! Here, take your wife's lovely hand and help her onto the landing. <sighs> Beloved husband. Beloved? Truly? We were speaking, Soliman, about you. We, we wondered if my sister would weep were you to die. And what did you answer him, wife? I... Were you to be slain? And what did you answer him, wife? I told him I did not know. And what do you think, Ali? Were you to die? Yes, I know. And I wondered when the realization would come. If I were slain... You would be next to the sultan in power. What do you wish? A war? Oh, no. Then what? A settlement. Here and now. Here and now. Then a side wife. And we'll see whose death you will weep for. Your brothers or your husbands. A side. sister weeps, mother. She will tire of it. She's wept like this since the moment of her husband's death. She will find another husband. She told me this, mother, that you have deluded me, cheated me. Oh? That I'm your slave. In spite of my power, I'm your slave. That the power is not truly mine, but yours. That I am your slave. at each other and understood each other and then walked away from each other and only the sister remained. And she was done with her weeping. She smiled. She was the type of girl who hated her mother. listening to Crime Classics and your host, Thomas Hyland, and his report to you on Ali Pasha, a Turkish delight. Some Albanians point to their own country as the land of opportunity, and they point to an erstwhile cave dweller named Ali who grew so in stature that he negotiated treaties with France and England and Russia, who maneuvered armies and history, whose court was filled with famous people and alchemists and philosophers and Greek poets, whose days were filled with splendor and new delights and the cackle of spilling jewels and the swish of silk. This story we're discussing here has its climax when Ali was in his late 20s, when he was well down the road of becoming a child of history, albeit a terrible one. This, then, is the story of one boy and his mother, a mother whose name was Kamko, who one day traveled into the hill country to visit another son. It is fine to see you, Abu. What do you do here, mother? Cannot a mother visit her son? The last time we spoke to one another, you called me vile coward and told me you never wished to see me. I bruised my heart, remembering. It is what I came for. To be forgiven. And not to laugh at me, your son, a shepherd clothed in matted wool among my sheep. Not to laugh at you. To be forgiven. I forgive you. 
Mother? Yes? What do you really want? What do you mean? You and my brother, Ali, you have this part of the world to own. Why do you waste your time with me? I stopped at your hut, Abu. And your wife directed me to where I would find you. And? She once was beautiful. And now? She withers. And your children cry too often, Abu. And your heart is bruised. Yes. And you wish me to salve it. Yes. How? Your brother frightened me. <laughs> Truly. And his love for me has spilled off. It is a hatred now. Weep upon my shoulder, Mother. He lusts for a solitary power. He envisions himself an Alexander, a Caesar. Which, in truth, he is. A minor one, but nevertheless of the breed. Congratulations, Mother. Cruel son. Then truly tell me what you wish. Slay him. My own brother? And everything he has will be yours. His palace, his harem, his estate, his horses. His power to command death and spare life and more. What more? Kindnesses for your wife. She has but to have a whim and it becomes a realness. And so it would be for your children. Would you like that? Oh, yes. Then do it. Play him. I am his brother. I am Abu. See? Here is a seal from his mother. Admit me. Who are you? Look close. My brother. My brother Abu? Yes. How many years? Ten. You're a shepherd, I heard. Yes. From your dress, poor. Yes. You're welcome here. That remains to be seen. Oh? I was sent here to slay you. Oh? Yes, I was to come here and greet you and reestablish our brotherly love to recall the olden days and reestablish tottering memories. Then I was to devise some stratagem such as perhaps you would doze and I would stab you. Why? Because you are a tyrant. True. Some device, you understand, and you would be slain. True. Uh, our mother sent you to me. Yes. Yes, she did. But you are a shepherd, a gentleman who sleeps beneath the stars and loves children and plays the reed. And I am a coward. Now, what will you do with me? You see, Abu didn't care very much for his mother either. And something bucolic in his shepherd's soul wanted to see two animals he called mother and brother against each other. What will you do with me, Ali? He persisted. And Ali looked at his brother with a grave and stern face. It should be mentioned that Ali always kept a headsman at his back. And he need only to bend a finger and a head would roll. Be picked up and spiked and exhibited to the countrymen. So, when Abu asked... What will you do with me? Again, even the headsman was surprised when Ali smiled. And, as was the custom for visiting relatives, he provided his brother with a slow tour through the palace, which included the fountains, the boar pen, the harem, the baths. Then Ali gave him a new matted wool tunic and sent him home. Then Ali made a gesture toward the headsman, which meant, come with me. So... Away they went to the minarets of his mother's pavilion. Where is she? What's she doing? Shh. Who are you? Physician to the noble Kamko, as are we all physicians. What is the matter with her? Ill. You know who I am? Of course. Then I command you to tell me what is wrong with her. Ill. But grievously? Unto death? No. No? No. Walk with me. Yes. Do 
You were saying, physician... Not grievously ill for such a conclave of physicians as the one which has gathered about. Sit. Uh, sit here, physician, and let your mind dance happily with the fountains dance. Eh? Sit. How bright the world when seen through leaping crystal. Uh, you sigh. You're weary. Have you come a long way to attend my mother? From Alexandria. Are you famous there? And wealthy? Fame, but no fountains. And fountains, physician. What do they make you want to do? What symbol are they to you? Wealth? Extreme wealth? Of kings, perhaps? In my court are the physicians of the world. Alchemists and doctors of repute from Spain and France. Each serves me and each night goes home to his palace to meditate and experiment. Their sojourn in my household is looked upon as a thing of... I've dreamt of sojourning in your household. How grievously is my mother ill? She complains of delicate pains in the thoracic region as if her heart were filigreed with tiny stabbings. Diagnosis... She eats too much. And that is all that is wrong with her. She speaks of a spinning in the cephalum that leaves a veil of mist on the forehead. And this is the symptom of... She eats too much. And you will prescribe... Licorice pellet and exercise. Physician. Yes. Prescribe poison. Poison, huh? Kindly poison, a gentle one, one placed upon the tongue that melts into death and immediately pervades. A tender poison, one that causes sweet and instant death. I cannot. And I will have you beheaded and summon another physician to do my bidding. First listen to me. Your mother, Kamko, makes each of us, each of the physicians, taste first her medicines. Either way, I should die. I see. I am sorry. Then listen. Yes. Uh, this prescription... My mother needs solitude. Oh? And darkness. Oh? Such a place as is provided in a dungeon in my castle. Oh. Listen to the fountain. Do you hear them? Do you hear the fountain? Your Highness. Yes, physician. A sleeping potion I'll give to her, and then you, or whomever you signal, can move her to wherever you wish. Yes. And for me, first sleep, then a sojourn, Your Highness, in my household. Ali, on his way to visit his mother... It's Sunday afternoon. Last Sunday afternoon, his mother looked terrible. Hello, Mother. 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 Vile. Vile. Oh, for an instant, I thought you were dead. Murderer. Let me hold the lamp close that I may look upon your face. Terrible. 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 I am weak, and I cannot move. And you mock me. When will you die? Evil. 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 When will you die? My death began the moment I gave you birth. Why do you bitter yourself with it? It is of your doing. This that has happened is of your doing. Evil son. Rejoice, mother. What? What are you saying? Rejoice. For I am to be proclaimed Ali Pasha of all the empire. The most powerful caliph the world has ever known. Rejoice. Son, listen to me, son. Yes. Lift me up and carry me from this dungeon that I may see your glory. No. 
No, no, you will stay here and, and feast on the echoes of it. Lift me up. I just believe this, Mother. I will have shrines erected to your memory. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? Do you hear me? back upstairs, and as soon as he walked into the sunlight, he was proclaimed Pasha. Then he bade his slaves to seal up the dungeon. From here on, there was no stopping him. He formed an army and drove the Russians from the Ionian Islands off the Albanian coast. He formed another army and became undisputed master of Epirus, Montenegro, and Thessaly. He became known as the Lion of Yanina because of his fearlessness in battle. He was also known as the blood letter. He lived to be a venerable 80. He never did become a venerable 81, because one day... Hail, Grand Vizier. To the brains behind the whole Ottoman Empire. Uh, welcome, Ali. Uh, what is that in the package? I have brought to you a jewel from Turkestan. Oh, thank you. It's a rare sapphire from Turkestan's loftiest summit. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, what can I do for you? Oh, nothing but permit to kiss the sleeve of your sacred robe. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's best I describe this little scene for you. As Ali bent to kiss the sleeve of the vizier's sacred garment. He got there all right, but... He never got to straighten up. The Grand Vizier put a knife in his back. Right up to the jeweled hilt. Ali was dead. Europe celebrated. Pasha, tonight's crime classic, was adapted from translations of the documents of the Times by Morton Fine and David Friedkin. The music was composed and conducted by Bernard Herman, and the program is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Thomas Highland is portrayed on radio by Lou Merrill. In tonight's story, Hans Conried was heard as Ali Pasha and Paula Winslow as Comco. Featured in the cast were Lillian Biaf, Jack Crucian, Kurt Martell, Vic Perrin, and Edgar Barrier. Bob Lamont speaking. Here again is Thomas Highland. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.